Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have gone to the offices of John Crozer to rescue a noted scientist abducted by Crozer. I know Professor Hegman is somewhere in this building, Crozer. Take us to him. Why, Commander, you're mistaken. Oh, no, we're not. Don't sit there under that sun lamp. Take me to Hegman. Well, all right, Corey, if you insist. <laughs> My eyes, turn off that lamp. Get him, Happy. I, I can't see. Oh. <laughs> yours, content. I... Now, Corey, I am going to finish you off permanently. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Brain Bank and the Space Binoculars. Wow! Man, oh man, oh man! Yummy! <laughs> that boy sounds excited, doesn't he? Well, no wonder. He's just had his first taste of Rice Chex, the delicious bite-sized super cereal. Wow! Man, oh man, oh man! Yummy! Same boy, yep, and the same cereal, only it's his second bowl. Try Rice Checks yourself, gang. You'll love it. I'll say. And when you eat a good breakfast with Rice Checks, you're supercharged. Absolutely. So, gang, try it today. Delicious Rice Checks. And, hey, today's the day for the biggest news ever announced on Space Patrol. So stand by, and I mean with pencil and paper, for the most sensational message you ever heard on Space Patrol. <laughs> Not far from Space Patrol headquarters on the man-made planet Terra is the Crozer Building. From his spacious offices on the top floor, John Crozer directs his far-reaching enterprises. It is Crozer's proud boast that his payroll list is virtually a scientific hall of fame, an interplanetary who's who of distinguished men and women in every field of science and technology. His rugged features and penetrating eyes are reflected on the polished surface of his mammoth endorium desk as he confers with his director of plant operations, Erla Becker, and the noted physicist, Professor David Hegman. Uh, Miss Becker, is there anything else on the agenda which concerns Professor Hegman? Yes, you wanted me to remind you to congratulate the professor. Oh, yes, uh, the Kleinhurst Medal. I understand you're receiving it at a banquet this evening. That's right, Mr. Crozer. Uh, congratulations. You are upholding the Crozer tradition. The Crozer tradition? Of course. Uh, for the past three years, every winner of the Kleinhurst Medal for Scientific Achievement has been associated with Crozer Enterprises. Oh, I understand that the medal is given for work, uh, which I did before I joined your organization. Well, I, I speak in jest, uh, more or less. Well, uh, that completes our conference, Professor. I have something to tell you, Mr. Crozer. Yes? I am forced, uh, with regret, of course, to submit my resignation. Your resignation? I don't understand, Professor. Well, it's my doctor's orders. He says my health won't permit me to continue my work for your company. But you're under contract. You're absolutely necessary to this project. I am very sorry. But my doctor tells me that unless I retire, I may not last for more than a few months. Oh, this puts my company in an awkward position, Professor. I won't tolerate it. I regret this as much as you do, Mr. Crozer. But I don't see what I can do about it. See here, Eggman. It'll take us three years to complete construction and install equipment. Your contributions are useful now in our present stage, but they'll be absolutely essential in three years from now. Oh, Mr. Crozer, no one individual is absolutely indispensable. There are other scientists in my field. Hegman, I hired you because you're the only man alive today who can see this particular phase through to a successful conclusion. This whole operation is geared around you. You can't resign. Well, my doctor tells me that I have no choice. Surely you don't expect me to endanger my life. I'm going to have a talk with that doctor of yours. I'm afraid it won't do you any good, Mr. Crozer. Two other doctors have confirmed his diagnosis. Very well. We shall see. Our interview has ended, Jackman. I have other matters to discuss with Miss Becker now. Goodbye, Mr. Crozer. Goodbye, Professor. The nerve of that man. Trying to walk out on me, John Crozer. I understand how you feel, but as the professor says, it can't be helped. I'll hold him to his contract. 
He's got to keep working for me. That project must be finished as I planned. You can't force him to disobey his doctor's orders, contract or no contract. Look here, Miss Becker. Your director of plant operations is up to you to find a way out of this. Well, let's face facts. Eggman's brain will be of most value to us three years from now. But he's got to retire immediately, so he's out of the picture. If there were only someone else with his knowledge. There is one possibility, but it's not legal. Uh-huh. Well, let's hear it. Suppose Professor Hegman were to be put in suspended animation for three years. Then, when he's revived, his health will be exactly as it is now. He'll be able to do a few months of work when he's most needed. Of course, Hegman wouldn't consent to it. Well, that's immaterial to me. We'll do it by force. That's an admirable idea, Miss Becker. We'll literally be establishing a brain bank. We'll put Hegman's brain on ice till we're ready to use it. There's <laughs> only one catch. How are we going to explain his disappearance? Uh, leave that to me. You locate some suspended animation equipment and get it here. When we get it set up, we'll bring Hegman to my office for one more conference. Well, nobody seems to know where the professor is, Commander. I've even checked with his doctor. I've just phoned Crozer. He hasn't seen him either. Well, maybe the professor forgot about his appointment with you. He could be out with friends celebrating. After all, he's just received the Kleinhurst Medal. I doubt that he'd forget the appointment, Happy. He seemed very anxious to talk to me. You knew, didn't you, that the professor has to retire? No. Why, sir? Well, his doctor warned him that he can't keep up the pace. Oh, by the way, there's something I've been wanting to show you. Yeah. Have a look at this new space patrol equipment. Binoculars? Yes. Not just ordinary binoculars, Happy. They're space binoculars. Can I try them out, sir? Sure, they're yours. Gee, they've got a band on them so you don't have to hold on to them. Yeah, the band fastens them around your head. Right, it leaves your hands free. Now, take a look over the city with them, Happy. I'll take the polarization off the windows. Wow, these are great, sir. Well, why, I can even read a small sign on the space terminal building. A sign I can't even see without the binoculars. Well, you get out in space, out of the atmosphere of terror, then you'll really see something. You mean they're even better out in space? They're so sensitive, they'll pick up very small objects many miles away. They're designed especially for pilots on search missions. Within a planet's atmosphere, they're good four-power binoculars. Wow. Hey, look, there's some people walking five blocks away, and it looks as though I could almost reach right out and touch them. Hey, from what you say, Commander, I'd sure like to take a look through them out in space. Mr. Crozer, this is the most outrageous thing I have ever heard. I refuse to let you do it. Professor, I'm afraid there's nothing you can do about it. Well, don't you know that even if I gave you my consent, it is still illegal for private persons to use the suspended animation process? Now, if you'll unlock the door, Crozer, I'll leave. Eggman, my friend, you're not leaving. Miss Becker, we might as well get started with the process. Give him the preliminary injection. All right, Mr. Crozer. Get away from me. Eggman, get away from that window. I wouldn't advise jumping out, Professor. It's a long way to the street. Yes, and it wouldn't be suspended animation. It would be terminated animation. Go on, Miss Becker. Give him the in- good electronic get, injection. Get away from me. Uh, I've got my hand over his mouth. Quickly, Miss Becker. Well, hold him still. Quit struggling, Eggman, uh, or you'll really get hurt. Uh, there. How long does it take for the electronic ejection to knock him out? A few seconds. Good. Yeah, he's losing consciousness. All right, Miss Becker. Let's carry him into the suspended animation chamber and finish the process. Commander, look. I can see the lettering on the windows of the Crozer building. These binoculars are fantastic, even in the atmosphere. Take a look at Terra Park, Happy. You can probably see the ants and the rose bushes. Yeah, they aren't that good. <laughs> but I can see people inside the Crozer building. Look, sir, on, on the top floor, there's a man standing in the window. I can see him just as plain. Here, sir, try him. All right, I'll take just one look, but then I think we'd better get to work. Yes, sir. It's the fourth window from the corner of the building, see? Yeah, it is clear. Well, that's Professor Hegman. Huh? At least I think it is. Oh, he's gone now. wonder why Crozer didn't have the professor call me. Uh, I suppose Hegman's busy closing up his work with Crozer. Yeah, I think he'd at least phone you. I'll tell you what, Happy. I've got an errand to make right near the Crozer building. Let's drop in and see the professor on the way over. I've checked the suspended animation equipment. Everything's working fine, Mr. Crozer. How long does it take? Another hour and we'll be through. Oh, good. You aren't going to keep him here in the building, are you? No, no. In a day or so, we'll take him to Mars. We'll have to take the equipment there, too. We have to give him booster treatments every three months. Hey, haven't you been under that helio lamp long enough? Oh, I've got it on low setting. You ought to try it, Miss Becker. It's uh, really very relaxing. 
Not as relaxing as that treatment we're giving Hegman. <laughs> yes. He'll be relaxed for three years. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Hegman, did you see him throw anything out of the window when you were struggling with him? I know. Did you? Well, he made a sort of throwing motion with his hand. I think I'd better go down the street and check. Yeah, that's right. He certainly didn't have time to scribble any note. But let's not take any chance. Come in. Hello, Mr. Crozier. Oh, Commander Corey. Nice to see you. Thank you. This is Cadet Happy. How do you do, Cadet? How do you do, sir? Uh, sit down, gentlemen. I hope you don't mind if I go on with this lamp treatment. I'm acquiring a tan for myself. I see you are. Unfortunately, I don't have the opportunity to get it the natural way, as you space patrolmen do. That's <laughs> quite a high-powered lamp. Yes, it can be, if it's turned up. I have to know how to handle it. The reason I came over, Mr. Crozier, is to see Professor Hegman. No, uh, the professor isn't here. Uh, remember, I told you I'd ask him to call you if he showed up. We saw him standing by the window of this office just a few minutes ago. You saw him in the window? Happy and I were testing some new space patrol binoculars. We thought we saw Hegman. Hegman? You must be mistaken. Oh, I know. One of my attorneys was here a while ago. He, he's about the same height and build as Hegman. Yes, come to think of it, there is a resemblance. <laughs> Funny, I never thought about it before. Well, apparently we made a mistake, Mr. Crozer. Sorry to have bothered you. Uh, no bother at all. No bother at all. The old fool threw this out of the window. I, I didn't know there was anyone in here. We were just leaving, but I've changed my mind. May I see what you have there? Oh, it's, it's nothing at all. Oh, no, no, Commander. Just a little promotion gimmick one of our companies is putting out. <laughs> May I see it? Yes, of course. The Kleinhurst Medal, a promotion gimmick? The Kleinhurst Medal? There's only one man who would have that medal on his person at this time. That would be Professor Hegman. What are you getting at? This young lady just said it was thrown out of the window. Well, why would anyone throw a valuable award like this out of a window unless they wanted to attract attention? Give it to me straight, Crozer. Where is Professor Hegman? You're jumping to conclusions, aren't you, Commander? That was Hegman we saw. If you're not trying to hide something, why are you and this woman so evasive? Why did you lie about the metal? You've got Hegman somewhere in this building. I suppose you won't be satisfied until you search the place. That's right. All right, then. Come on. I'll just turn this lamp on full power and right in your eyes. Turn it off! My eyes. Get him happy. I can't see him. No, oh, but I can. Grab that book in, Miss Becker. Nice work, Miss Becker. And now, cadet! That'll hold them for a while. It was a smart trick, Mr. Crozer, shining that helio sun lamp in their eyes. I had to do something after that four paw you pulled. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know they were here. We've got to move fast. Arrange for a spaceship. We'll get Hegman aboard. What about these two? We'll lock them in the next room till we get Hegman out of here. Then I'll come back and finish our space patrol friends for good. We'll be back with space patrol in just a moment. Oh, come on, Captain Twofeld. Tell me what Buzz Corey's big new surprise is for all his kids. Won't you, huh? No, I can't tell you. Please? No, nope, it's a secret until the end of today's program. Is it something the commander himself uses? Oh, you bet it is. It's official space patrol equipment. Can't you really tell me what it is? No, nope, it's a secret. Well, then, how about a little hint? Well, I'll tell you this. It's something absolutely new and different. Oh, man, oh, man. I just can't wait. Well, you hurry now. Get a pencil and paper ready and keep listening because in just a few moments, I'll tell you what the big surprise is and how you can get it. And all you boys and girls listening in, you do the same thing. Get pencil and paper ready and be all set to take down the information you need to get that wonderful new surprise Buzz Corey has for you. So long for now. See you at the end of today's program when I'll tell you all about the biggest, the swellest, the most exciting value ever offered on Space Patrol. <laughs> John Crozer and his assistant, Erla Vecker, have placed Professor Hegman in suspended animation, intending to revive him three years later to finish vital scientific work on a vast project Crozer is managing. When Commander Corey and Cadet Happy decided to search the building for the professor, Crozer blinded them with a beam from a high-powered helio sun lamp and then knocked out the virtually defenseless space patrolman. Buzz and Happy have just regained consciousness and their vision and find themselves locked in a room. <coughs> No, it's no use, Happy. We can't break down that door. Uh, we must be in the Crozer building, judging by the view from the window. Yeah, on the top floor. And Crozer's probably miles away by now with the professor. Mm, I doubt it. He wouldn't go away without being sure we'd never be able to report him. He'll be back. And then I've got a feeling we'd better get out of here before he returns. Let's take a look out the window. Say, maybe we can attract the attention of somebody in another building. Oh, it's locked, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a ledge out there. 
we break the window, we could crawl on the ledge to another window. And that's not my idea of a pleasant stroll, 50 stories out. It's not mine either, but it's a lot safer than what Crozer has in mind for us. Yeah, this chair ought to do the trick. Turn your head, Happy. Watch out for the glass. <coughs> All right. You want me to go first, sir? Now, wait till I knock these sharp splinters loose. Yeah. Hey, let's go. I'll boost you up. I can make it now, sir. Wow, what a long way down to the street. And don't look down, Happy. Lie flat on the ledge and crawl. Yes, sir. I hope we can find another open window along here. I wish this ledge was wider. I, I feel like a tight rope walker. Oh, easy, Happy. Oh, my knee slipped off. For a minute, I thought I was a goner. Don't try to hurry. Hey, Commander, we're in luck. Is that window unlocked? Yes, sir, and it's partway open. All I have to do is push it. Easy now. Don't push yourself off the ledge. Anybody inside? I don't see anybody. Well, here goes. Nobody in here, sir. Watch the door. How are you going to do away with Corey and the cadet? You unlock the door. Swing it open. I'll blast them with this gun before they have a chance to rush us. Open the door and be sure and stand back. Don't worry. All right, Corey, we'll... They're gone. Gone? Well, this room's empty. Look at the window. Well, they couldn't have climbed down the side of the building. Yeah, they certainly wouldn't jump the ledge. They use the ledge. By now, they've probably given an alarm. This whole building will be swarming with space patrolmen soon. Well, what'll we do? We've got to get out of here. We'll have to forget about the equipment. We've got to get to the spaceport and blast off right away. Hurry, Ola. We haven't a second to spare. Take it easy, Happy. All right. Open the door. There's nobody in here either. Just some equipment of some kind. Uh, some men's clothing, coat and a hat. What kind of equipment is this, sir? Suspended animation equipment. Oh, that's what they use in criminal rehabilitation centers to help cure criminal tendencies. Yes, but how did Crozer get hold of it? And what for? I thought it was against the law for private individuals to have these. Oh, that wouldn't stop Crozer. Why would he want this equipment? Why would he want to put under... Professor. What? That must be it. With the professor in suspended animation, he'd be easier to conceal. Well, sure, but what good would the professor be if he was unconscious? Crozer could revive him whenever he needed him, even months or years from now. I wonder what Crozer did with him. He'd try to get him off Terra. Let's go to the spaceport, Happy. Happy, I've just checked with the space control dispatcher. There was a slip-up. Crozer blasted off. Didn't they try to stop him? The order to hold him wasn't relayed to the dispatcher in time. How long ago did Crozer blast off? Uh, about 15 minutes ago. But I've got a description of his ship. Come on, Hap, let's get aboard Terra 5. We're going after them. Uh, that was luck. I was afraid they'd stop us at the spaceport. Look in the viewscope. There's a ship following us. Well, the space patrol. Yeah, we are in a spot. We can't outrun that ship. No, no, but we can get rid of the professor. Corey doesn't find Hegman on the ship. He can't prove anything against us. Well, what do you intend to do? Just shove the chamber out into space? Oh, yeah. Chances are the professor will never be found. Come on, we've got to get rid of Hagman, and then we'll take our evasive action. Corey won't stand a chance of locating that box with Hagman in it. Gaining on them, sir. All that crazy flying Crozer's doing isn't getting him anywhere. He's trying to delay the inevitable as long as possible. Maybe I can talk some sense into him. Turn on the space phone, Happy. Yes, sir. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling John Crozer in private cruiser T-431. Commander Corey calling John Crozer. This is Crozer. Go ahead, Corey. Go ahead. <laughs> this hide-and-seek isn't getting you anywhere. It's just a matter of minutes. Play it smart and give up. You talked me into it, Corey. But at least I gave you a run for your money. Uh, what do you want me to do? We'll pull alongside and join airlocks. All right, Corey. Just a warning, Crozer. Don't try anything. Corey, out. They've joined airlocks with us. All right. Have you got the electronic injection? Yes, it's right here. Yeah, they won't suspect anything from you. Watch your chance and use it on Corey. I'll jump the cadet. He won't be in your way. And then when they're unconscious, they can join Professor Hegman out there in space. All right, Earl. Here they are. Careful, don't make any slips. All right, Crozer, get your hands up. Of course, Commander. Searching for weapons, Happy. Yes, sir. Where's Professor Hegman? Professor Hegman? Why, we haven't the slightest idea. Come on, quit stalling. What did you do with him? We haven't got him. Search the ship if you don't believe me. As 
just what we will do. He doesn't have any weapons on him, sir. All right, keep your gun on them, Happy, while I search the ship. All right, lady, get over there next to Crozer. My name is Erla Vecker, and I'll be glad to. Oh, excuse me, Commander. Oh, no, you don't. What have you got there? Let go of me. In your hand. Come on, Erla. That's it. Well, electronic injector. I'll take that gun, cadet. Oh, no, you don't. Uh, All right, Crozer. Hey, nice one, Commander. Don't try anything like that again, Crozer. And no tricks from you either, Erla. It's lucky you saw her with that electronic injector, sir. You should have had us in deep freeze. That was a very foolish move on your part, Erla. Now you're in this just as deep as Crozer. Now, let's have it. Where's Hegman? All right, I'll tell you. But you'll never find him. He's somewhere out in space. What? You threw him out of the ship? That's right. All sealed up in a nice cozy box. Chances are he'll float forever in space in suspended animation. Happy, get these two into our ship. We'll cut loose and start a search. And they're going to stay right with us till we find them. Nothing, sir. That blip turned out to be a small meteor. You're just wasting your time, Corey. That box with Hegman in it is just a speck in space. Your view scopes won't show it unless you happen to be very close. We'll just keep looking. I've got the view scope on full sensitivity and wide scanning, sir. I'm afraid the view scope isn't much help. Well, here. Let's try these. The space binoculars. It's a long chance, but it might work. Scan in a slow arc, Happy. There's something. Oh, no, it's just another meteor. Let me have a look. Hey, wait a minute. It's a rectangular shape. Check it, Happy, about ten degrees high. I see it, sir. Yeah, it's a box, all right. That's it, we found it. Change back to Hap. Let's hope we're not too late. There it is, Happy. Yeah, I can see it now through the viewscope, even without the binoculars. Stand by to fire forward breaking rockets. Standing by, sir. Fire rockets. Yeah, that'll stop us, Happy. All right, get the spacesuits. We'll pull the box into the ship. And Crozer, we'll just lock you and Erla in a compartment till we get the professor aboard. Why don't you sit down and relax, Crozer? You'll wear out the commander's carpet. Why don't we hear from the hospital? Yeah, you're pretty worried now, aren't you, Crozer? You know, if Professor Hegman doesn't come out of that deep freeze, it's going to go mighty hard on you and Erla. Oh, they should know by now. Oh, for Saturn's sake. Sit down and stop that pacing. Oh, here's the commander. Crozer, look who's with him. Professor Hegman. That's right. It's certainly lucky for you two that the professor pulled through that treatment. Yes. And Mr. Crozer... It will give me a great deal of pleasure to testify against you. Well, then show me with more of his work than the doctor first thought. Well, in that case, we actually did you a service, Professor. Uh, Commander, that should be taken into account. Don't you... think you're going to get off easy on that account. It's just luck and the fact that we had these space binoculars that saved the Professor. Yes, Happy, I had no idea that the binoculars would actually help us save a life. Well, you sure were right about their being terrifically powerful out in space. And they're great in a normal atmosphere, too. I'm not going to lose any time in issuing them to all space patrol personnel. Uh, sir, did you know that when you look through the binoculars the wrong way, you can see into the future? Oh, I was under the impression that they just smallify. But if you say so... Oh, that's ridiculous. It just makes objects look far away. Uh-huh. And far away, I see a criminal rehabilitation center with two people in it. John Crozer and Erla Vecker. And they're getting the same kind of treatment they gave Professor Hegman. Suspended animation. You want to have a look? Uh... <laughs> In just a moment, we'll give you an exciting preview of next week's thrill-packed Space Patrol adventure. But first, gang, oh boy, first of all, here's that big, wonderful surprise we promised you. Get your pencil and paper, get all set to go. This is the greatest value we've ever offered on Space Patrol. Commander Corey, you tell the gang what this terrific new item is. Boys and girls, our surprise for you is a pair of those wonderful new Space Patrol space binoculars. Binoculars like the ones I used today when I spied the professor floating in that box way, way off in the distance, remember? Gang, you'll be able to see way, way off in the distance with the Space Patrol binoculars you get, too. Yes, sir, these binoculars are four power binoculars with four lenses. And when you look through them, they make people, houses, buildings, cars, everything else, blocks and blocks away, look bigger and nearer and clearer. No adjusting necessary. The lenses are fixed focus lenses. 
Why, you don't even have to hold these wonderful binoculars up to your eyes. You wear them like official outer space headgear. They have a strong elastic band on them, and when you slip it over your head, it holds the binoculars in place and leaves your hands absolutely free. Makes you look like a man from Mars, because these binoculars stand out from your eyes a full three and a half inches. That's right. These are not flimsy little celluloid goggles or a mask. These are real, full-size binoculars. Overall, they're five inches wide, five inches long, and they're made of solid plastic. Beautiful, long-lasting, black solid plastic with bright red leather-like trimming that makes them look terrific. Now, don't forget, you can see way off in the distance with them. You can spot your dad coming home from work, spot the mailman coming blocks away. You can watch birds in high trees, study animals, identify people in the distance, read signs way, way off, and see airplanes way up in the sky. And when you look through the other end of your space binoculars, they do a switcheroo. They make close-up things look like they're far away from you. Yes, sir, gang, these powerful Space Patrol space binoculars are the greatest value we've ever offered on Space Patrol. To get a pair, do this. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in continental USA and may be withdrawn at any time. If you don't agree that your books are absolutely tops, Return them, we'll return your money. That address again is Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Buzz and Happy are approaching a building where the Secretary General's daughter, Carol, is held captive. Suddenly, they became aware of a tingling, painful sensation and a ringing in their ears. It's getting hard to walk. I... I feel like I had a big weight on me. I can hardly move either, Happy. Nora must be using some kind of ray on us. A paralyzer ray? I think it may be worse than that. They're undoubtedly in an ultrasonic beam. Get back to the ship. Get out of range quickly. I I can't. I I can't make it. Happy, get up. You've got to get up. Here, I'll help you. I, I can't even crawl. My head, there's a thousand needles in it. If we don't get out of this beam, it'll tear us to pieces. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Sleepwalker, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Ken Mayer, David Duval, and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult